Hey guys, and welcome back to another cast of the Lord of the, Ri the, Lord of the Rings, the Battle for Middle-earth 2, the Rise of the Witch King. I'm your caster, Master Cloud, and today's replay, let's see what we're up to. We are going to be casting a game on Buckland. So this is going to be a 2v2. Buckland, a one of the fairest 2v2 maps with... Um, the only real sort of map bonuses being a couple of watchtowers and one outpost centrally located between all four of the all four of the players. Spawning in the lower left hand side is going to be myself, Master Cloud as Mordor, and in the lower right we do have Bradlew spawning as men. Our opponents in the top left hand side is going to be Blue 56 spawning as the goblins. In the top right we have the dwarves as or Kabaj playing as the dwarves. Now Kabaj is going for a barracks off the start here. Looks like Bradlu immediately going for two farms and two farms for myself as well. Possibly nope, one farm and uh, immediately building this uh, orc pit. Most likely going to be going for that early capture on the outpost here to start getting those additional resources and help out my team immediately. However, the goblins do build their pit faster, so uh, Blue may get out some troops here in time to capture that before me. Meanwhile, the dwarves, looks like they will be moving out here, going to be capturing that uh, frontal tower. Ah, oh, we do have Gollum spawning on this map as well, hiding down, hiding here as this dwarf might spot him. Not that he can do anything about it at the moment. And it is going to be building a forward mine up here too. I would assume that's to help reinforce and capture the outpost if needed. And yep, the goblins do get the first units out. So they will be ahead of me there. But I will have the archers, so I should have the range advantage on them. However, I'm not sure that um, it'll be enough, especially with these dwarves out now. It looks like they do find Gollum and are chasing him down. And they will maybe kill him? Hard to say, yeah, they will kill him. So the goblins do get the ring here off the start. Not sure how much it'll help them on such a small map, but uh, they do grab that just in case. And the dwarves will end up actually capturing this. Meanwhile, Bradlow in the bottom right has finally built a barracks and is going for some Gondor soldiers off the start. Does have a lot of farms already placed, so he will be making a, a lot of additional income. Now it looks like I've actually lost, maybe? Yeah, I have lost one of my watchtowers here to the Goblin Builder. So that does not give me, that gives them the vision and high ground advantage. And if they do make any archers, they will be able to put those in there and gain a significant advantage over me. Meanwhile, we do have the dwarfs moving in on Bradloose Farms. And we'll start to battle those while Bradlew attacks um, the dwarves' mines. But uh, the dwarves are able to easily reinforce these, being as uh, the dwarves can move throughout the underground mining tunnels and pop out wherever they feel like. So um, Bradlew may be able to win this battle. It's hard, or at least take out this mine. But in the meanwhile, he's lost his mine in the lower left-hand side. And additional uh, guardians here are moving up to take out this farm and reinforce their friends. The goblins continue, continuing to pump out uh, just the goblin warriors. Has he moved towards any sort of additional tech advantage? Looks like just now he is going to be throwing down an additional goblin cave. So we are going to see some sort of uh, goblin spam or uh, a large amount of goblins. Uh, to try and deal with my, looks like I am going for a uh, higher volume of archers. Have I built any additional tech advantage? Yeah, looks like I am pumping out some additional uh, Easterlings here to sort of get uh, some meat in front of my archers to, to guard them. So I do grab that troll there, grab the additional income there, throw down the bonus to help deal with this goblin because they focus on these archers to the north here and get pelted in the back. Meanwhile, the goblins building a mine here to help themselves reinforce, throw down their own bonus to sort of 
I don't turn mine. However, there's so few goblins left that I just won't be enough, and those bats will fall. Actually, I might go... Yeah, they will go for the bats next. And that builder might not get away. And was that the builder in the tower? No. So the builder in the tower does still exist. This is his last builder, and the Easterling's working on that tower. Does take it out and takes out the builder, so the goblin player does not have any... Uh, blue here does not have any additional builders at, at this time, and he won't be able to build any additional goblin caves until he... Oh, he did build a third one. Okay, so he did build a third one. So he will be okay. He does only have that one builder out. Meanwhile, the dwarves... So many guardians have now been... Um, are, are now on the field. He doesn't have a lot of mines, but he doesn't really need it. He's, he's placed his mines in... Uh, basically attacking positions to help, to help him uh, take out... All of the strategic points that uh, Bradley will be trying to utilize. And Bradley desperately trying to get out some horsemen. But again, these Gondor Knights just not very effective at uh, charging through. And that will... Um, that will be cleaned up by uh, Kabaj here. As he can now continue, now attacks the barracks of Bradley. And these... And even though it is placed within the range of the fortress here... The, the dwarves are just doing so much damage and uh, desperately trying to save my ally here. I do get out Mount Sauron to deal with some of these guardians. Meanwhile, my forces on the left side continue to push forward uh, towards the goblins. I do run into a group of uh, goblin warriors here, but I move my archers back onto the terrain bonus here to give them the additional damage and armor. And with that, I should be able to clean up the rest of these goblins. Now Azog is in with these goblins, so he will be adding a lot of DPS, uh, significant DPS, as he moves forward and gets the bonus for killing units, so he will be bringing in additional income. Meanwhile, the dwarves have captured the center and have pumped out archers now, or at least that might be their ability. Formir and Malthasar are not able to effectively deal with this, as they've taken a lot of damage. But they may survive an additional horseman from uh, Mortar here, myself. It is going to help clean up some of these dwarves and push back their forward position. Finally able to uh, hold off that attack. And it looks like possibly kill off Azog and the remaining goblins. Azog did escape, but all of his uh, warriors were able to fall in that attack. Uh, definitely not smart attacking onto, this, uh, onto my terrain bonus here. The dwarves still do hold the center, though, and that uh, that does count for something. However, with my Roger Lancers and Malcolm Star on the field, uh, the Guardians are not nearly as effective in dealing with our forces. And it looks like uh, Bradley will be able to capture that. Definitely needs that now that a lot of his mines and infrastructure has been destroyed. And with that outpost gone, the goblin or the dwarves here, uh, Kabaj, is going to be in a little bit of trouble because uh, he doesn't have a lot of mines in his base, and that is going to significantly reduce his income. So we'll see what he goes for if he uh, starts building some additional mines or just tries to save up as much as he can. Go for a dwarven here to sort of counter this. Looks like the dwarves were able to recapture or at least hold on to this. For right now so he is still making a decent amount of income and he does go for King Dane uh, who comes out just in time to save this as well as to hold off my horseman attack here. Meanwhile a huge battle happening in the top left as my archers attempt to deal with some of the mines are now Gothmog out as well as he continues to attack here. Additional goblins will be in reinforcing this and we do have the armor upgrade to the goblins to try and uh, prevent some of the damage done by the archers. Malthasar now showing up, throwing down his weakness spell of his own to try and counter those bats. Meanwhile, Radlu still getting run over here by... Uh, kind of funny, he has the horses, but he's getting run over by the uh, by the dwarves and King Dane. So many pikemen out now for the dwarves to deal with the, to deal with the horsemen and the heroes. So that does end my recording time for part one. Please tune in to part two to see the conclusion to this um, to this series.